Welcome back inside the Miami Convention Center as we get set for our men's doubles gold medal match. There's a look at Will Howells, former Notre Dame tennis star turned pickleball pro, two-time pickleball champion. We are underway here in our men's doubles match and immediately targeting that right hip of Howells. But, but can we say, here's the pace, and then here's exactly what Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson are going to do with her. They want you to feed them pace because then they can stay even shorter. Oh, Sales that's long. A, that's a good counter there from DeHart. I thought it was going to be Johnson that was going to have their first reach in speed up yeah. off the backhand, but Fraser attempted it right there, but fed it straight into the forehand of DeHart. Reach in forehand roll, but it's just too good right there So what JW Johnson does so well right there is he gets the ball elevated enough that he can do something with it He waited for DeHart to commit to a spot DeHart committed to the sideline. He rolled middle Time Frazier comes up short side out. Yeah, there's a little misstep in the middle of that point where Frazier came too far over. Got a little tied up there with Johnson. Big drive from DeHart gets the ricochet as he and Howells get on the board. Yeah, and Frazier had the opening court right there as Howells was trying to crash a little bit more. Trying to push it a little too far. Nice angle from Johnson. Way too much pressure right there, and it started with the speed up from Dylan Frazier on the first, right there, and then J.W. Johnson going to get all the credit on the put away. Too fine with a backhand side out, tied at one. That's just grinding a point out right there by J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. And, and that's exactly what they can do. They can grind that out and wait for the right opportunity to speed up. Speed up from DeHart, catches the hip. You're not going to out patience J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier. No, they'll wait for the right moment. Howells juked himself out of his shoes right there. <laughs> he went to go make a move here. Watch this. Right here. And he put himself off balance. Well, right? it, like it, was, it was the, the double shuffle, right? You're, you're right. going to go left and right. Don't be too cute right there. You just, just have to set one way and, right. then, and then jump back the set other. Set your feet. Don't try and do too much right there. You're trying to fool your opponent. You end up fooling yourself. When you're playing against a team that's so technically sound as Frazier and Johnson, what do you have to do without trying to outsmart yourself? Well, you have to get the ball movement and the tempo on your side. If you're playing to their tempo, which is very calm and relaxed, and like we that. saw right there where they move the ball around, they don't try to do a whole lot with the dinks, they force you to make the mistake. And then once it's there, they speed up into the hands. If you allow them to get into that game, it's very, very difficult to get it out. Look, 
it's simple. They lull you into a dinking game, right, and thinking, oh, this is nice. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, boom, boom balls on set. top of you, right? It's like, what in the world? Like, what just happened? Well, we've always talked about it, Dom, where, where if you're playing against those players, you have to initiate the pace first. However, it's very difficult with Frazier and Johnson because their hands are so good. But they are susceptible to certain spots. Frazier, it's it's a higher backhand. I bet, sorry, Johnson, it's a higher backhand. And Frazier, it's kind of, it's right hip, right armpit, where you, you, you have to T-Rex yeah. him almost and, and have him lose his arm. But you can't do it. Frazier on the last one got caught on the left hip. Side out, back over to DeHart and Howells. Oh, my oh, God. That is not. Wow. You see him shaking his head, too, going, yep. Yep, I got that. But he that's the deception. He speeds up from that spot as well, right? You watch him. He reaches in, and then it's just up. Doesn't even break the wrist. Just comes up the back of the ball with the angle already set. And that's that aggressive rollout wide. And this is how Frazier and Johnson get on you. They went on a four-point run on second serve. Quick side out. They're already back to the point-scoring side. Just long. Well, and that's the thing too is like you're you think you're playing well and you think we're oh we're we're constructing points we're doing well blah blah this and that, but then you turn around and look at the scoreboard and you're like what the we're we're down five one right now, what just happened? All over it, but I mean a good speed up there from Hal's getting Johnson in the movement as he's trying to come back middle It's so difficult on the forehand side when you are moving back middle You want to get extended with the forearm uh, with the forehand because your body is really elongating to get back to the middle Big backhand drive from Hal's to heart can't come up with the dig second serve Well, that's the issue right there with the third shot drive especially from that deep in the court from the baseline that's a much better one, right? So right he's on, stepping inside right on court. cue, he's inside through transition speeding that up rather than being back behind the baseline. When you're back behind the baseline, now that counter hurts even more. I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed to DeHart when he stepped over on that first ball. Just flipping it straight in the right peck of Frazier from that point. Because once Frazier and, and Johnson got settled again, now that they, now they're on the disadvantage. Second serve. Missed third, second serve on the way. And at that point too, Chad, you know, you're trying to make something happen. Yeah. Right? You have to make something happen. For, force the issue and, and take some risks. Which normally we don't say. <laughs> I know. It was completely against our coaching philosophies. Elevated ball makes for an easy put away for Howells. But it's a double up to the same spot right there on Frazier. He he took the forehand, took a step back to the middle. And that second forehand got behind him. Paints the line. So right after the last point where Will Howells had something to say to Dylan Frazier, immediate answer, and he tries to do the same thing, and it doesn't work, right? That's making in-game adjustments immediately. And then two mistakes followed after you say something to your opponent. So it's, and I know they're all friends because those three <laughs> do train together. Right. But we need to settle in here and focus on point to point. Got to heart on the left hip. Another point. It's a four-point advantage for the top seeds. Well, that one's either a quick flick or a roll to the feet. The hot couldn't make up his mind between which one he wanted to do and just floated it straight to Johnson. DeHart and Howell taking a timeout as they find themselves down 6-4-1 in game one of the men's doubles gold medal match. Timeout on the court, and now it's time for a message from our proud partners. We never just see the numbers, we see the people. When I first started the company, I was really excited to empower people of all abilities. 
you've made something that people find invaluable. It fuels you to keep making a better impact with your business. I don't have to think about the pathway to the ocean. I just know that I'm going to be able to surf again. That's why we're here, to help make it happen. J.P. Morgan Chase. 18 years from tonight, Grant Gill will become a legend. When he totally kills it at his improv class's graduation performance, knees will be slapped, suds will be sprayed. People won't know what hurts more, their cheeks or their sides. That's why he's already keeping himself in shape and razor sharp today with health tips and wellness tools from AARP to help make sure his health lives as long as he does. Because the younger you are, the more you need AARP. Game one of the men's doubles gold medal match, Ryler DeHart and Will Howes, just their second tournament playing together. They played as a pair last year in Chicago. They lost in the semifinals to the eventual winners, Andre Diescu and Rob Nunnery, who won so many gold medals on could, tour last year. You could just year. guess and say Andre <laughs> Diescu and Rob Nunnery win that. You'd yeah. be right more times than not. Yeah. You might get it wrong three times. <laughs> I, th I think that was about it. Rob Nunnery not available right now due to injury. Can't wait to have him back on tour. Nice, nice angle, angle there from Howells. Look at us. We're in unison. I know. I mean, so many times we talk about that overhead and, and trying to hit it through the court. But you see the positioning of Fraser and Johnson right there. They're dead center on, on each of their halves. Missed return from DeHart makes it a three-point advantage. 7-2-2. A five-point advantage, a side out as DeHart and Howells able to get back on serve. Will Howells, 24 years old, out of Boca Raton, Florida, initially from Richmond, Virginia. That's a good point construction there. Yeah, better finish right there from Will Howells. He stayed within himself. I like that little flick to the sideline. Oh. <laughs> you cannot pop that ball up to Johnson. Oh, jammed up right in the, the, the chicken wing right there. Watch this. DeHart just can't do anything. Again, oh, same spot, but... That's just such a smart play. You think J.W. Johnson's hitting that and not knowing where he's going. He knows exactly where he's going with that ball, right at that left hip of Ryler DeHart. Why is that left hip the best place for that ball? Well, he's lefty, and that jams him up. He's talking about hip to armpit. That's that chicken wing area where it's the best spot to go. That but. is not. <laughs> so typically, you know, whether it's right hand, left hand, we're covering... 70% of our positioning with the with the backhand and that hard spot is the paddle side hip to armpit Because if it gets any close to the body you get jammed up You have to be out in front and then you can switch over but if it, if it's tight to the body then You know, it's very difficult to try to transition from the backhand to the forehand. There's just a look at Johnson 21 years old making his home in Florida is that court way too open, easy put away. Well, good coverage from Will Howells as DeHart was off the court. He gets the next one back here. Watch the court coverage. Howells covers, but then just nothing you can do. Nobody home on that left side. And Johnson and Frazier just cruising here in game one. Johnson and Frazier putting on a clinic as they lead 9-3 in game number one of the men's doubles gold medal match. Another timeout taken by Ryler DeHart and Will Howes. And taking a look at Johnson and Frazier, you have two of the more decorated players on tour through the course of their careers. Johnson, 64 medals coming into today in his entirety of the APP. Frazier adding to that total with the mixed doubles gold. He won just about a half an hour ago. And so these are two that are very comfortable playing in this type of environment. Yeah, I mean, there's no pressure on them. They've been here, done that, right? at every aspect of the game. It's just 
what can they do, that being Will Howells and Ryler DeHart, to change that up, to get them out of kind of their comfort zone? Right now, Chad and I both want them to, hey, let's play free knees. Let's speed some balls up. Let's put some pressure on them, at least attempt to. Right there. Yeah. Right? You have Ryler DeHart coming in and just swinging at two. Let's go for it right now. What we always talk about is that you want to lose it on your paddle, right? You don't want the other the other team to dictate miscommunication up the middle. To do. But <laughs> Frazier and Johnson are so good at playing controlled pickleball and picking their spots for everything that they do. Sails long, side out. I mean, DeHart gets two nasty pickups right there, but again, J.W. Johnson just Calm, cool, and collected on the other side. He's just going to find a spot and put you in a tough position. And continuing to pick on that center area of Ryler DeHart. Brings up game point. 10-3-1. Goes long off the Ernie attempt. J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier take game one. They're putting on a clinic of the top seeds. 11-3. We'll be back with game two of the men's doubles gold medal match here at the Chase APP Miami Pickleball Open. couple of the U.S. Next Gen National Team players in attendance. Earlier this week, the APP announced the 2024 Next Gen National Team. The mission of the APP Next Gen U.S. National Team is to educate and build a successful foundation for each member of the squad through seminars, on-site coaching, international exposure, and development training camps. Some of that international exposure coming this week as part of the first ever Atlantic Cup, which Team USA came back and won today thanks to a great showing, Chad in the mixed doubles. Well, we were in trouble. <laughs> we came into the day down 4-2. Let's say Team Europe dominated us in singles, but we were going into mixed doubles today having to win all three. And let's say Team USA stepped it up, really put on the pressure against Team Europe and walked away with the 5-4 victory. Good job, Coach. And I have to say, <laughs> job, I'm coach. quite proud of my team. Good job, Coach. Spencer, they all performed today. Spencer Lanier, Richard Livernese Jr., Jack Monroe in there as well. Really great environment. Fans oh, that, really brought the, the energy for that. was electric. It was a lot of fun. 
Yeah, and we got to know Team Europe pretty well when we're at in England last year at the English Open, going again this year in August. There's that pressure early on here from DeHart and Howells. Coming out, maybe changing the game plan here. And like you and I said, Chad, we need to, they need to put pressure on. If you're going to go down, go down swinging. Right there, but it's, on it. it's a perfect one two combination, right? Frazier knows exactly where that ball is going to go after he speeds yeah, it up two. down the line on Will House because, in reality, there's only one place to go when it's so tight goes backhand, sorry, forehand, backhand, and all over it. That was close right there. Howells and DeHart call that out. One, one, two. One, one, two. Some more pressure there at the kitchen line from DeHart. Typically, that's a money winner right there from J.W. Johnson, but Rilo DeHart's left-handed, so it's right to his forehand. Typically, it's going to be a backhand of a right-handed player on that right side. with it off the tape because there's they're, they're so used to playing with those paddles out in front early just holds waits for the ball to come to the paddle one, two, one. but I'll tell you what the heart and house have the ability to blister some drives they almost need to take a little bit of power off of it add some shape to get something dipping below the net to then because that's what Fra happens yeah have Frazier yeah. and Johnson trying to volley up on it because if they're coming in flat and we saw that a little while ago from Johnson coming in flat go straight into the net court we have to kind of dissipate the ego a little bit and saying how hard I can hit the ball and add dip to it instead this third second serve on the way we had the conversation about power versus placement and how it's necessary to have both but you have to pick your spots was there and ready. It was a great setup right there on the ATP from J.W. Johnson. Frazier just overhits it a little bit. When we talk about that, it's placement over power. That's exactly what we want. You do need to have both, but I'd rather have placement because, again, if you can hit your spots, much better. Well, in, in this team of Frazier and Johnson, power doesn't yeah, phase doesn't work, them, right? They're not, they're not scared of it. Uh, that's what you and I too strong from house. We talk about it, you know, as two baseball guys talking about it. It's a dead red fastball hitter sitting on it right now, and you need to throw well, some it, off it, speed. It doesn't in there. matter if you throw it at 105; if you hit in the same spot, they're going to time it up. Correct. in from DeHart leaves it elevated for the easy put away. So DeHart got stuck in cement right there. He ended up feet planted and Frazier went behind him and he ended up reaching too far and when you reach too far you're fully extended you get stiff, pop that ball up easy put away. A replay yep, because hit it the, hit the it hit the bar across the bottom. 
You see it catch the net cord and it gains some spin and then kicks back into the net. And perhaps a lucky break for Howells and DeHart. He was going to have a hard time coming up with that one. Well, Maybe the same result if, as DeHart if, puts it in the net. If there is no bar there and it's just the net, that ball kicks back into the net and it's impossible to get back without hitting the net. DeHart and Howells taking a timeout. A reminder to check out pickleballsuperstore.com via the QR code on the screen to get your instant discount. J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier out to a 4-2 lead here in game number two. J.W. Johnson, Dylan Frazier all over this one. It has been a clinic put on by the top seeds. They just don't do too much, right? They stay within themselves. They force you into mistakes. And when you make a mistake, this is the biggest key, is they make you pay, right? They don't, they don't miss. And that's the biggest key. If you give them nine or ten opportunities, they're going to make nine of them. And that's just going to hurt you so much. As you see right there on that last one, J.W. Johnson, not a big swing. But what does he do? He hits the right spot, point over. And again, now all of a sudden you're like, oh, we had a 2-1 lead. It disappeared in a second, 4-2 yeah. down. But the other thing, and we talk about it all the time, these these highest seats where their in-game adjustment and their in-point adjustment is so quick. You might beat them once, but typically you're not going to beat them the second and third time you try that same shot. Ooh, ooh, wow. Great for Johnson Set, finds the angle for the winner. Angle. Right, it was overhead, forehand, and then forehand winner. Here we go. See it right here. First well, overhead. He and pins, a forehand. pins the heart right there in that position. He's holding, expected to come back again. Smart to use the angle. We like angles. <laughs> That reach oh. and that flick right there, so good. Right now, everything going the way of the top seeds, cruising up a game and four points here in game number two of the men's doubles gold medal match. He was that got a little too big. You see on that, we always talk about a second take back where you set it. And then the ball's quite not quite at the paddle, so you lay it back again. Just oh, sat up and Howells missed it. But it was just full defensive mode through transition for DeHart. All he could do was sit there and try and reset, reset. Eventually, Johnson and Frazier get one up that they can attack. Howells with work to do if he wants to keep his gold medal streak going. He won a gold in men's doubles as that one catches the line in Punta Gorda alongside C.J. Klinger. Won his first gold in men's singles in Sacramento. Ooh, that's the right ball, though, for DeHarty. He's stepping into it. But again, that's what Johnson and Frazier do. They force you into a little too much. Oh, that's a dirty drop right well, there from that's, Frazier. That's the perfect drop right there. Howells uncoiling from the stack. Aggressive roll down the line. Net, right. Dylan Frazier. <laughs> Net body point. Five point lead. It's 8 3 as DeHart and House take another timeout. But guys, right now they have no answers for what to do with Johnson and Frazier. So, you know how Chad and I will always drop in a baseball analogy. Yes, right? I do know that. So, as Chad being a pitcher and me being an infielder, right? Mm -hmm. I'm playing behind Chad. I know what he's doing with every pitch he's making, right? So, it sets me up in a good position. I can sit back, know that Chad's going to get me a ground ball, right? So, I can set up. It's similar to what Frazier and Johnson are doing. 
doing right now. They know what's coming from their partner, right? So as I knew what Chad was throwing, they know what their partner's doing. So Frazier knows what Johnson's going to do. Johnson knows what Frazier's going to do. They can set up and get in the right position for the next ball. So they're ready for that counter if it comes. They're ready to pull wide, sideline to sideline. So you can make that kind of analogy there, sport to sport, too. Well, there's, there's, and the same thing too, this comes down to, to drilling, right? And this is why pros are pros, is because they figure out sequences, they work sequences. They know if I pull a ball out wide to the backhand of the guy on the left, these are the three options that are going to come back. And then they adjust it to each individual player. Right Get there. on top of it. Set it up. Knock it down. That's a volleyball set spike. <laughs> and it's and over. Kill. And that's it. Rolls off the tape and falls on the side of the net of Howells and DeHart. Championship point for Frazier and Johnson. They add to the medal count, and it is a goal. J.W. Johnson and Dylan Frazier, the top seeds. They run the table in the men's doubles. They take the gold medal. We will hear from them when we come back. You're watching the Chase APP Miami Pickleball Open on ESPN. Dylan Frazier, J.W. Johnson, take the gold here, Chad. This is match point. Well, and it's part about what you, you talked about. Two attacks from Frazier. Johnson's right there, puts it away. So familiar with each other, know exactly what they're going to do. And the hands, none better than Frazier and Johnson. We'll throw it down to Dorian Craft, who's courtside with our post-match interview. Dylan, J.W., congratulations on your gold medal. J.W., I'll start with you. We talk so much about how you and Dylan play so loose, play so free. What is it that allows you to feel so comfortable playing alongside this guy? 
Yeah, I mean, we played together for a long time. Uh, we practiced all the time back at uh, Florida, uh, back in Boynton too. So it helps quite a bit. And you know, uh, when we keep playing tournaments, we keep getting more comfortable with each other's shot every time. And you keep winning. Let's be honest about it. Dylan, you also practice with Will a lot. How did you use your knowledge of Will's game to help you tactically here in this championship match? Yeah, we, we play with him a lot, so we know his strengths and, and weaknesses and what to what to kind of pick on, what to avoid. And, but it goes the other way, too, right? He knows us pretty well. Um, so just being uh, careful to not go to his strengths, play to his weaknesses. But for the most part, I think we just try to do what we do best because we're pretty confident that we can come out on top if we do that. JW, one more for you. You're from not that far from here, just about 30 minutes away to do this. Family's all in attendance. What does that mean to you to be able to do it here in this environment on the APP Tour? Yeah, it's a lot of fun, especially since I don't have to fly in a plane to get here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it's super fun to be here. Super cool um, environment here. Uh, thank you to Chase and APP for making this happen. Well, congratulations, guys. J.W. Johnson, Dylan Frazier, your men's doubles gold medal champions. Well, there's Ken Herman presenting Dylan Frazier and J.W. Johnson with their medals. About to get the trophy as they are your gold medalists here in men's pro doubles at the Chase APP Miami Pickleball Open.